Hello everyone. Uh, today I would like to review two Japanese foundations for you. Um, both of them are very expensive. Um, this one is called Axia Cream Foundation and it retails for $250. Um, this one is called um, uh, Cannibal 20th Century Cream Foundation and it retails for anywhere between $200 to $250, I believe, depending on where you get it. I will be applying on this side of my face with this uh, 20th century cream foundation and this side of my face with Axia foundation and throughout the day I will also provide you a few updates uh, to show you how these two foundations perform and if they're really worth the money. At the end of the video there will be a small bonus session where I talk about a dupe for this foundation and you can buy it in the US uh, easily. Um, it's also a Japanese brand, but it's about uh, a quarter of the price of this one. They are very similar in my opinion. Uh, for this one, I still have not yet found, uh, found a dupe for it. I think this is a very um, special foundation for me. Okay, so if you would like to see um, how I apply these two foundations on my face and how they perform throughout the day, please keep watching. So now I have applied 20th century foundation on this side of my face and in terms of the coverage I think it's um, light to medium coverage um, as you can see here um, there's still some redness on my face that is peeking through so I wouldn't say this is a very high coverage foundation I don't think it's um, one of the things that is claimed by this foundation either and in terms of the uh, dewiness uh, I think this foundation, it does not look oily, um, but it's not one of the most uh, dewy foundation either. I would say the shine that comes from this foundation, I would describe it as the natural healthy skin's glow. I did not apply any primer um, prior to applying this foundation, um, just because some of the primers will increase the coverage of the foundation and sometimes some of the primers will uh, make her foundation look more dewy, but today I really want you to see the real uh, capabilities of these two foundations themselves. So um, without a primer, I would say that this foundation kind of um, make most of my pores invisible. Except for the small area here where my pores are larger than the rest of the face. So. Um, and in terms of the moisturizing properties, as a combination skin in summer, I think right now it provides me just the right amount of moisturization. Okay, now let's move on to uh, this part of the face with uh, Axia uh, foundation. Okay, so now I finished applying um, the Exia um, cream foundation on this side of my face. Um, in terms of the coverage, I would say um, this on this side of the face is almost the same uh, coverage as this side, which is I would describe it as light to medium coverage. And in terms of the uh, dewiness and glow, I feel like on this side of the face, this 20th century foundation gives me more glow than this side. This is more of a, right now I would describe it as a um, satin finish, um, not very dewy surprisingly because I know this uh, foundation is famous for giving you very very dewy skin. In terms of the uh, consistency, these two um, foundations have very similar consistency that is very very thick. Every time you only need a very very little amount to cover half a face. Uh, I would say you need probably half to even like a quarter of the amount of a normal liquid foundation that you use with these two foundations. They're pretty expensive but every time you only need a very little amount. So there you kind of justify the price a little bit more. And uh, in terms of the capability of making your pores invisible, I would definitely say that this side is a win. 
my pores look much less visible on this side right now than on this side. And in terms of moisturizing proper, um, property, um, I feel like as a combination skin, I can't really tell the difference now. I feel like I have no complaints on either side. Okay, so now it's about 2.25 to 2.30 p.m. And in the morning, I apply the foundations on both sides of my face around 11.30, so it's been three hours. Uh, let's see how the two foundations perform. Uh, first of all, uh, in the morning, I did not apply any loose powder or any powder foundation on top just because, uh, as I mentioned, I really want you guys to see uh, how these two foundations perform by themselves. Um, right now, um, I think the glow is definitely stronger on both sides of my face, but I would not say that it's uh, anywhere near uh, looking oily. I would still say like it's very natural skin glow, glow and it's very dewy, uh, the healthy glow. Um, definitely not very shiny. Um, in terms of the appearance of my pores, I would say on both sides of my face, uh, the pores look even less visible than in the morning. And especially on this side with the Excel cream foundation, I can barely see my pores um, just looking into the mirror with this distance. I can't see any pores, which is kind of amazing. Um, and overall, my face, I can't see any spot where the foundation um, breaks open at all, especially around my nose area where um, foundation usually tend to break the first. The foundation still stay pretty well on both sides. That's the checkup for 2.30 p.m., about three hours after the initial foundation application. Okay, so now it's about 5.30 in the afternoon and um, it's been about six hours since I applied my uh, foundation on both of both sides of my face 11:30 a.m. and let's see how they perform um, In terms of the glow, I definitely feel like my face now look more dewy than three hours ago uh, when I checked uh, last time, but I wouldn't say that this is being shiny in a negative way. I think it's still um, I think it looks very nice uh, especially now strobing is a trend in cosmetics industry I think I like this kind of look very much now um, in terms of the uh, pores something that is very interesting happened um, right now when I look at the pores um, on both sides of my face they are both very invisible remember last time when I checked uh, only this side um, the pores are almost completely invisible right now this side uh, with 20 saturate foundation my pores are also like almost completely invisible like from this distance so it seems like the capability of making your pores uh, invisible uh, of this foundation 20th century has been improving over time so now it's about 9.30 p.m. Uh, it's been about 10 hours uh, since I applied the foundation uh, at 11.30 a.m. this morning. So uh, let's compare how they, they look on both sides of my face. So on this side with Ixia Cream Foundation, the pores are much less uh, visible than this side with 20th century foundation. And in terms of coverage, I think they are almost the same, still light to medium coverage. And in terms of shine, I definitely think this side is much more shinier than this side. So that's my idea on this uh, two foundations, uh, which are the uh, highest end cream, a Japanese foundation uh, update for you guys. So I actually took off my makeup after about 13 hours, and both foundations on my face um, broke apart a little bit around my nose area and kind of looked a little bit cakey. So these two $250 Japanese foundations are not that magical. But one thing I did notice after I uh, washed my, my makeup off is that my skin looked still very, very good as if I just woke up in the morning. And this has never happened before with a drugstore foundation. Usually if I wear my drugstore foundation for 13 hours in a row, um, in one day, when I take the foundation off, my face usually looks like my skin usually looks 
um, very bad. So the skincare benefits of these two foundations definitely work on my face. Uh, the picture you're looking at right now um, is the foundation that I found um, that is very similar to 20th century foundation uh, in terms of the glow uh, coverage. And both of them um, feels like a second skin on the face. Um, the only difference is that uh, actually on a lot of uh, Asian skincare and cosmetics forums, I've read that uh, people with dry skin actually think 20th century foundation is too drying for them. Whereas with this Kogendo Aqua foundation, it's actually uh, better for people with drier skin. And for those with oily skin, I would not recommend you this Kogendo Aqua foundation. I think it'll make your face look very oily throughout the day. And if you want to wear it, I would definitely recommend that you wear a oil control um, base as well as um, a loose powder um, to set the foundation. Uh, thank you for watching my video. I hope you all have a fantastic day.